Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. On this episode, I want to talk about a very interesting article, a famous article on Harvard Business Review called What's Your Data Strategy? So this is a very famous article written by two guys, Leandro uh, Del Newell and Thomas Davenport. And in this article, the authors, they provide their own interpretation of data strategy and their own categorization of data, of the different types of data strategy. So in brief, they say that data strategy, there are two main objectives in data strategy, defense and offense. Okay, so data strategy objectives can be categorized in defensive objectives and offensive objectives. And an organization needs to understand where they lie in the spectrum and then plan accordingly. So what's the difference between defensive objectives and offensive objectives? So defensive objectives refer to ensuring that there are data security measures in place and that the organization is protected against the worst possible outcomes. So it's data security, uh, privacy, integrity, quality of the data, regulatory compliance, governance, etc. So in the defensive world, what is the key are things like having the right processes in place in order to ensure data quality and in order to ensure that there's clear visibility of who's handling what. And this is where some ISO standards like the ISO 27001 can play a huge role. And in general, defensive strategy is more about making sure that nothing can go wrong. Okay. So I guess a very good example of an organization that cares about defensive data strategy is hospitals and related institutions where they have to handle very large amounts of data. This amount of data, this data is is crucial to their operation, but they don't care so much about how to use data to extract value from them. They're using data for their operations and they want to make sure that this data is not abused. On the other end of the spectrum, we have what we call offensive data strategy. So offensive data strategy takes place in the domain of predictive analytics, machine machine learning, all the cool stuff. An offensive data strategy is about extracting the maximum value from your data, extracting insights from your data, extracting, creating models from your data, which can help give you a competitive advantage, which can help you beat the competition and increase your margins and improve your efficiency. So a great example of the type of organization that cares a lot about offensive data strategy is retailers. Okay, so retailers, they have to do things like customer analytics, customer segmentation. If we're talking about online, then we're talking, or we're also talking about recommender systems. So retailers, like online retailers, like Amazon, they invest huge amounts of money in order to improve their recommender systems and even a small increase in the performance of such a system can make a very huge difference in the bottom line of an organization. Okay, so all these organizations are really playing offense with their data. That's not to say that these organizations don't care about data privacy, they do, but for them, the key with data is to make the most out of it. Okay, and then you have some organizations that sit in between, like banks. Okay, so banks, they're very heavily regulated and they need to ensure that that they are complying with the regulations, that there's no data abuse taking place, and etc, etc. But at the same time, banks have to innovate because fintech is a very dynamic environment and banks are these days always at the threat of being disrupted okay, by smaller firms. And, and I guess the prime example of this is blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And that's why we see many banks adopting new technologies from AI, and machine learning to now, many of them talking about 
blockchain and, and, and cryptocurrencies. And banks really have to find the balance between, between the two. So understanding what are your objectives as an organization can help you understand whether you need to play defense or offense because the requirements are very different, right? So if you care about defense, then you should care about GDPR compliance. If you care about the offense, then you should care about creating a very solid team of data scientists who can take the organization to the next level. In my work, I had the opportunity to work with both types of data strategy. So with my work as a data scientist, as an individual, as someone who is working in research and development, I'm playing offense. Okay? I'm working on the creation of new algorithms, especially when I'm working with startups and smaller innovative organizations. Whereas with my work through the Tesseract Academy, I help organizations play both offense and defense. Defense in the sense that the Tesseract Academy provides education on topics such as ISO 8000 for data quality or GDPR. And offense in the sense that I can help organizations understand through the Tesseract Academy how they can create a proper team of data scientists, how they can create a plan in order to attack specific problems, how they can really take the organization to the next level and grow through the use of AI and machine learning. So as you know, data strategy is one of my favorite topics. So if any of you are interested in speaking more about this, make sure to visit the datascientist.com. And also if you're interested about data strategy, make sure to visit tesseract.academy. That's tesseract with double S. The links are in the description. Also, please make sure to send me an email so I can give you a copy of my book, The Decision Maker's Handbook to Data Science, where I'm talking about some of these topics, like the ones we talked on, on this podcast and many, many more. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you and hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.